Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my podcast. My name is Jackie Kay, and this is Sipping with Jack. On this episode of Sipping with Jack, we'll be discussing Nicole Murphy's cheating scandal, Tamar Braxton versus The Real, and so much more. I will be highlighting my favorite drink of the week, which is a blueberry lemonade cocktail. This is a simple and refreshing drink, but now let's get sipping. But before we get into these topics, let's get into the drink of the week. This is a single serving recipe. If you would like a bigger batch, just adjust the recipe to your needs. Also, don't forget to check out my website, Sipping with Jack, for more recipes. So, a blueberry lemonade cocktail is a very simple drink, super yummy. I actually found out about this drink when I went to a bar, and I asked the bartender to make me something just different, and she came up with this. And I was like, okay, she says, I see you. So, this is now my one of my go-to favorite drinks. All you'll need is... Blueberry vodka, which I personally use Smirnoff. You can use any other brand if you find it. Lemonade, and you will need some Sprite. Or you can use club soda. It's whatever your preference is. To make this blueberry lemonade cocktail, you'll need one part lemonade, one part Sprite, and then you'll need an ounce of blueberry vodka and Literally, that is it. You pour all the ingredients in a cup. Have a blueberry lemonade cocktail. Okay, now let's get into these topics. Okay, so the first topic I wanted to talk about was the Nicole Murphy cheating scandal. And I know some of y'all be shook because it's like, didn't this happen months ago? Yes, it did happen months ago, but sis is still talking as if it happened yesterday. And... Now I feel like I'm forced. I'm forced to talk about it. So if you guys didn't know, Nicole Murphy went on to Wendy Williams, which I think was a mess. I don't know why she chose to go on Wendy Williams, but I do suspect that that was the only show she could go on, so she had to take whatever she could take, um, and Wendy Williams was available. So she went on Wendy Williams and tried to say her side of the story of, you know, the pictures that came out of her, you know, making out with a married man who was Antoine Foqua. I'm really not sure how to pronounce his name, so I'm just going to call him Antoine. So there was basically pictures of her and him at the pool in Italy, you know, getting together, kissing, all of that stuff. And so basically... She released a statement saying that they were family friends and that was a friendly kiss. Um, I've never heard of a bigger lie in my life, girl. So she came out with another statement the next day, basically saying that, you know, it was a mistake and she apologizes, blah, 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 all that stuff. So that was what happened originally. That's the original story that happened two months ago. But now she went on Wendy Williams, which I said was the worst idea she possibly could do because she couldn't even... Girl was lying through her teeth the whole interview, and she was really trying to make us believe her, but we did not believe her. Like, also, I don't know if her PR team knew that um, Wendy was cheated on, okay, and the side chick didn't even care. So Wendy is a scorned woman, and now she's bringing a woman who is a cheater on her show. She's not going to treat her that well, and I think... They should have thought that through because Wendy did not let her get a lot, like, through and the way of, you know, believing her. Like, Wendy knew she was lying the whole time and she was not believing any of the lies, which I I really like. I really like that Wendy did that, but also she's a woman who scorned. So, yeah, she wouldn't be that forgiving to a woman that does that stuff because um, she just got cheated on and her dude had a side baby on her so 
Wendy a little bit of her. But keep doing you, sis, because uh, it was just an interesting interview. And basically, Nicole, what the interesting thing was is that Nicole almost didn't take accountability for what happened, which was weird is because it was you and him in the picture. It's not like we, we you know, photographed the picture to make it seem like that never happened. But on the show, she kept saying that, yeah, she apologized, but social media. And one thing kept saying, what about social media? Because social media didn't do anything. Like, there was pictures, social media dragged you because you deserve to be dragged. Even though Antoine did not get dragged, but, like, he deserves to be. But apparently, him and his wife have, like, arrangement. So, I don't know. They do them, but he deserves to be dragged, too. But, basically, Nicole was just saying, like, social media, social media. But it's not social media, sis. It's all you. You cheated. Um, not like you... Well, she's not with anyone, but she was the other woman in the situation. Like, she was on a married man, and social media caught you, and they dragged you. So it can't be social media's fault for the whole situation, because it's not. So I didn't really appreciate her, like, basically scapegoating the situation, blaming everyone else, when it was all useless. I don't know. I just felt like the whole interview was her just not taking accountability for anything and blaming social media and blaming love b scott for bringing out a false statement which that's a whole nother thing because love b scott came for her neck and sent out text message proof that that's what nicole told her but i digress i don't know i think it was just interesting and i loved how wendy made her apologize to antoine's wife and that was such a half apology that I've ever seen because she's like, you know, girl, I'm sorry. It is what it is. That's not an apology. And I'm so, I'm actually really tired about talking about this because it's just, it's almost to the point of like, it's so stale news that I don't understand why she brought it back up again. But I heard that she's actually trying to market new products. So I think that's why she probably had to go back on to cause another buzz around her i'm not really interested like i felt like i just need to tell the story how how she basically like lied through the whole interview trying to make everyone believe that she was just such a wholehearted victim but in reality she wasn't and also to nicole murph now the situation girl i know you called the paparazzi let's be honest because before i even knew the story i didn't really know you that all well so, and I did not even know who Antoine is, was either. So for you guys to be in Italy and somehow get paparazzi pictures of you too at the bull, when literally I don't really even know who you guys are. Girl, if that was not staged, get out of here. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Okay, on to the next one. And I'm not even gonna ask you guys a question because at the end of the day, Nicole Murphy was so wrong, dead wrong, and she needed something to come off from, but in the end, it just blew up in her face. That's what all that did to her. So, good luck, girl, because you in your 50s, and you should not be doing that at all. You're not in your 20s. Act like a woman, okay? Grow up. You're a mother, you know? Don't behave in that way. Like, don't behave in that way. Ugh. Anyway, next topic. So the next topic is old tea again. I don't know why all of these old tea stories are coming back up again because I'm tired. We all should have been tired about this. So basically, the other day, Tamar went on Wendy Williams, which Wendy Williams is the key, the key component pot stir of this week, I guess. So she went on Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams was talking about The Real, which, you know, Tamar Braxton was on The Real three years ago. She was fired three years ago, right? Can we just, can we just put that in retrospect? Three years ago, she was fired from The Real. Yet, she keeps talking about The Real as if it happened yesterday. Okay. So, anyway. Basically, Wendy was like, The Real is a cute show, but I, she's like, I miss you back on The Real, blah, blah, blah. 
Like, Wendy was instigating her, and Tamar said the, basically the same thing. Like, you know, God removed me from the situation. I'm doing on and better things. Um, she was also saying something about, like, I don't know what. I Honestly, I don't remember all that she was saying because she keeps talking about the story as if it happened yesterday. And it's been three years. So she was basically saying that, like, She's on to better things. God removed her from that situation, blah, blah, blah. And just talking that mess that she's been doing for three years. So anyway, I am very thoroughly disappointed with this story, to be honest, because the real responded to her. That was one thing they should have never done. You know why? Because Tamar is a narcissist. And a narcissist needs attention on them all the time, regardless if it's good or bad. So for her to keep talking and keep chipping away at the real the real women and being like, well, you got me fired. Y'all never told me nothing. Y'all showing nothing, blah, blah, blah. Like she keeps chipping at them until they have to actually respond. And that's what Tamar wanted because she's a narcissist. She wanted them to respond. And guess what? They did respond. And I feel like they came in such a classy way responding back to her basically saying you know we are emmy award winning show without you like we wanted you back on the show just to like bear the hatchet which you can't do that with the narcissist they don't care about bearing a hatchet they want to seem like they're the victim they want sympathy for themselves all the time they don't care they don't care about bearing a hatchet they will make sure that hatchet hits you in the back every single time to make you look bad so anyway that's when the real messed up Twice, twice they already messed up. So basically, the real responded back to her, as I said, in a very classy way. But of course, Tamar heard that they responded. And as a narcissist, she was like, yes, they responded. They acknowledged me. Now let me tear into them more. So basically, Tamar ripped all of these people apart. Not really. She really came for Lonnie, which I feel like that is so disgusting, the way that she came at her. Um... But it necessarily wasn't her, but she knew what she was doing. She posted a video on her Instagram with, who is it? The lady from the Queen's Court, T.S. Madison. She posted a picture of T.S. Madison talking about Lonnie Love and how lie. I literally had to take a break because I forgot how to say Tamar's name. Like, my brain literally just stopped. It was like, sis, this girl is not, you're not going to keep talking about her. But you know what? I came back. And now I know how to say her name again, Tamar. <laughs> so basically what I was saying is that Tamar went ahead and posted a video of T.S. Madison talking about Lonnie Love in such a disrespectful way. And I understand that T.S. Madison, like Kaya and all those people are known for roasting people. And I get roasting. Like, I'm so for roasting. Like, <laughs> I do it every day. But I feel like there is a fine line between roasting and disrespecting someone. And I feel like she disrespected her when she wanted to post that video about Lonnie Love. Because at the end of the day, as I keep, I keep reiterating about these old tea stories, is that literally no one cares. You're the only person that keeps holding on to this. So it makes you look weird. Sorry, Tamar. Tamar? Tamar? Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you guys, I have to finish up this story real quick because my brain is just literally disinterested at this point. But it's just interesting that she keeps talking about it and she doesn't think that she is the issue or the problem, which surprises me because Tamar, if you are that sis and you were that good on the real, why hasn't anyone picked you up to do your own talk show i know the whole thing with steve harvey steve harvey tried to get you a show it didn't work out because you don't have a great personality and i hate to say that i hate to say that and that's not me being rude or judgmental it's because tamar has a very strong personality and we even saw it when she was on you know the real where she kind of like got louder than other people and kind of got a little more outspoken. I never want to say aggressive, but she really upstaged other people. Like, she needed more attention. And when she was on Steve Harvey as, like, a guest host or, like, they used to do that panel where they would just sit down and discuss 
topics that are happening in the news. And I remember she treated Marie Osmond. I want to say that's her name. Or is it Brooke? One of those people. I'm so sorry that I confused them. I believe that it was Brooke. Um, the, the lady that dances all the time. Like, she's really good. And I apologize if I forgot her last name. But it was Brooke that she was talking to. And she disrespected her so deeply. And the thing is... I get that you're on a panel and you're discussing things with people, but Tamar came at her as if she, like, put some bad juju on her life or talking down to her or being, you know, rude. Like, there's a way you can handle things when you're disagreeing with someone, and then Tamar literally crossed the line. So she had to go on Instagram and apologize publicly to this woman because this woman didn't even want to talk to her after the show because you're being so rude to her on public TV, and you wonder why you don't have your own TV show. You wonder why you still have to talk about something that happened three years ago, because honestly, Tamar, that was probably the best three years. Well, three years ago, that was probably the best time of your life, because you had a TV show. I ain't trying to be mean. Your marriage was kind of right. You still had your man. You had your baby. Like, you had, you know, your husband and everything and you had a tv show and you also had a tv show with your family so you were thriving you were doing well and now since she's been off the reel i feel like tamar who i'm telling you my brain already forgetting how to say her name because she's almost to that point where she's borderline irrelevant to me like oh sorry that was some true tea right there i feel like she is and the only way um, she gets any attention now is if she talks about the real and that's that's troubling that's very troubling for you to be doing especially since you're in your 40s which first of all people act like your age the number that you have attached to your soul act it act it right now because these women uh, out here y'all playing like you are 17 years old and you guys aren't you guys are grown women that you need to act more mature or just get over stuff. Like, honestly, it's annoying. So I'm actually going to throw you back, guys back a question for this part. I know I didn't do for the Nicole Murphy part because I really don't care. <laughs> Sorry. But do you think that Tamar is looking very weird or strange for her to keep talking about this? Do you think that... Literally, it was the high point of her life that she has to keep talking about it. Or do you think that Tamar is in the right for saying what she is saying? Because she has proclaimed that she was backstabbed by someone on the reel because no one really told her that she was getting fired or anything. She kind of just like was by Felicia. But at the end of the day, I don't think Tamar is right in anything because at the end of the day, you spoused out and went off of Lonnie Love and then now she deleted all of the stuff because sis can't back it up. Back it up, fam. Like if you're going to do something, do something and stay with it. But of course she couldn't because she looks like a terrible person and she's trying to portray this image of her being a victim and not knowing. So that's why she had to delete everything because... It don't make sense. Make it make sense. And she didn't. So that's why she deleted everything. So yeah. Do you think Tamar is looking strange for keep for her still talking about this whole situation? Or do you think, hey, this was very traumatic for her that she can keep talking about it? And also, do you think Wendy Williams is a bad friend for reiterating this situation again? Or just bring it back up. Because my own thoughts was, Wendy, like, if you guys are that close of friends, you wouldn't bring up such a bad situation to your friend. Like, I know some things my friends have been through that I will not bring up again. Because that's something that was traumatic to them. That hurt them. I would not bring it back up again unless, A, I want to hurt them. Which I never want to do, so I never bring it up again. Or, B, I want to rub it into their face as if... You did something wrong because Wendy Williams still has a show. Tamar doesn't. And I don't think she will ever help Tamar get a TV show. That's probably why she rubbed it in her face, girl. Wendy, you need to get it together because I feel like you're 
I don't know. I feel like that situation was really awkward and weird. And as a friend, you shouldn't bring up that situation again. Unless you have you have a motive for bringing this back up again. And she clearly did. So, anyway. So, the last topic I want to talk about this week was Malik Yoba. And if you guys didn't know, Malik Yoba is actor. And he recently came out to say that he is trans attracted so basically he's a heterosexual man as he claims not putting any titles on him but he is a heterosexual man who is attracted to trans women which he came out and basically he was propelled to come out and at first i was very proud of him for coming out because i feel like we're at this day and age where people should be free and do whatever they want to do Especially, like, you shouldn't have to hide or conceal yourself. But then the weird story gets really weird, okay? Malik comes out saying he's trans attracted, you know what I'm saying? Which is fine. He does him. But then it comes out that he is, he was messing around with 13 year old uh, trans girls. So, yeah, the story got a little weird. It came from him being, you know, out of the closet to now him. Now being a potential, you know, you know, potential work because I ain't trying to lose, you know, some money, lose some, you know. But it came out that he was, oh my gosh, I'm trying to say the best words I possibly can without, you know, being censored too much. But basically it came out that he was with trans, basically they were children, they're 13 years old and he was literally your grown man it's not okay so basically these allegations came out and somehow malik did not want to entertain these you know these allegations since he just recently came out as being trans attracted he didn't want you know that storyline of him you know messing around with underage individuals so the thing is, what's so funny about that whole, you know, coming out as being trans attracted and like saying, like, and all these allegations, it reminds me of Kevin Spacey. If you guys don't remember, he was on House of Cards and all of this stuff came down that he was trying to hit on like a 13 year old kid. Crazy story. And him like, you know, harassing individuals. And then all of a sudden he comes out saying like, I'm gay, but it's, it's way too late, sir. Like, there's way too many allegations for you, especially, like, harassment allegations, assault allegations, and you talking to, you know, 13-year-olds, 15-year-olds, like, and you're a grown adult. You can't all of a sudden come out of the closet and say that you're gay because that doesn't make sense. There's still children. Like, there's still, ch like, children. You can't say that all of a sudden because that, that does not correlate to each other at all. So... This kind of reminds me of that situation with Malik. Like, he's coming out and saying, like, yes, I'm trans attracted, but, like, there's a lot of allegations behind you, sir. That makes me feel a little uncomfortable where you are going with this storyline. So, anyway, I wanted to talk about this story because he went, did an interview with Roots uh, Magazine, and basically he went off. He went L cycle like I don't even know what happened to that interview because I actually watched the interview and it was really interesting <laughs> and I'm not trying to laugh but it was really interesting because the interviewer wholeheartedly knew what they were doing and I'm I really commend him for not backing down and asking those right questions because sometimes celebrities like to scoot around things and if it doesn't portray them in the right light they get mad about it. So that's why Malik got real mad. So basically, he was on the roots. The interviewer asked him about the allegations, which, of course, Malik was like, he was trying to say, like, he's never met these people, blah, blah, blah. Like, he tried to explain himself in the best way that he could, but you can tell that he was agitated. So the guy tried to, like, ask him another question to, like, keep the ball rolling because you can tell Malik was getting mad. He getting big mad now. So the interviewer asked him another question. And 
was like, okay, there's many people in the black community feeling like you are fetishizing trans women, which I always believed that was kind of the storyline. You can't say like, oh, I'm heterosexual, but I'm attracted to trans women. I don't know. I feel like it just doesn't make sense. Like, if you are attracted to these type of people, then just say that you're attracted. Don't say that you're... I don't know. It just didn't... Once he said it, it didn't feel right. It felt like he was almost fetishizing these people, which I really commend that man for saying that. He was asking, do you feel like they are right for saying that you are fetishizing trans women? And... This was the right question, and you can tell that this was the right question because Malik got real mad and did not even try to answer that. He was like, we talked about this. We spent together, like, we spent four hours together yesterday. You asked me all of these questions. I told you to not ask any of these questions, and the guy was like, yeah, I told you that I was going to ask these questions. Like, I'm confused. We talked about it, yes, and I'm still going to answer these questions. Like, I'm still going to ask you these questions, which was really funny because that dude was not backing down like he was just like yeah we talked about it and i'm still gonna ask you like a straight up g girl so basically malik keeps going off and the guy was like the more you talk the worse you look and when he said that i think he knew he messed up because he tried to backtrack because malik got really like aggressive towards him and so the guy was just like you know what F it. Like, I'm gonna stand up for what I said. And he said it again. He said, the more you talk, the worse you look. Because it is true. The more you talk, sir, the worse you look. Because you're not trying to address any of these allegations. Yet, he's trying to act like he is Martin Luther King of the trans community. Which, I was confused because, sir, I never heard about you talking anything about the trans community on, on like, a couple of weeks ago. And he's out here saying, like, I'm doing work in this community, which... That's another question, because I, I think he's just, it ain't it, sis. That's all I'm trying to say. It is not it, sis. So basically, Malik was like, ah, oh, nah, I'm done. So he just basically goes off, and he's yelling at everyone. He's saying, this is my life. Like R. Kelly, R. Kelly edition, this is my life. Even though y'all are dead wrong for everything you guys do. So, I don't know. I just felt like it was interesting, because it literally showcased him in the worst light possible and it was all because of him it's all his wrongdoing all of his outbursts that made it look bad for him it wasn't anybody else who was doing it to him so i think that was interesting because this facade of him saving people being mr captain save girls is is not his look and it's it's very apparent because the way that he broke down, he seems like he's a very guilty man and he just doesn't want it out because he's just started a new show on BET Plus and I don't know, at this rate, he should be promoting that but he's not because he wants to promote other stuff in his life that I feel like, honestly, my personal opinion, he has this very lightly, I feel like he has no right to almost be talking about this stuff. And I know some people are gonna be like, well, you know, people in the trans community or LGBT plus community, they need allies. But Malik is not the ally. He is not an ally for you guys. And it's so apparent and real that he's just fetishizing these people. that It like breaks my heart for him to just feel like, oh, well, I'm out here, I'm supporting the people. But he's saying, He's heterosexual. That he's heterosexual, but he's he's trans attracted, which is just as I said, just fetishizing people, and you're not doing anything for their community. Like I don't know, he just bothers me altogether about this whole situation. For him to like spaz out like that, it just tr shows his true colors. And I hope people listen and actually view that as real. Because if, truly, if a person has nothing to hide, they won't behave in that manner. And clearly there is. There is something to hide. <laughs> so, 
Anyway, that is my last story of the week. I apologize that some of these stories are a little older tea, but I really had to come on and speak about these topics because they just, they're just interesting because people really hold on to things or just really milk stuff. Let me just say that. My last section of the podcast is going to be a different section it's not going to be a trigger trash section even though i do got stories y'all it's actually going to be a little more positivity um in this podcast i wanted to finish off the podcast with you know words of wisdom some inspiration some positivity since we are starting off the week you know it is sunday night we're going into the work week just a little positivity for everyone So what I'm going to leave everyone off with is just know that you are more capable than you think you are capable than I think I am. Like I can fight for things that I want. I can make stuff happen. All I just need to do is sit down and plan my life and just move in a way that's more conscious. And I just thought that was so inspiring. I wanted to give that back to everyone. Just know that you are capable of doing whatever you want. You are capable of making that change. You are capable of being that girl, that guy, hunty. Be that sis. And you are capable of that. And I just want everyone to know that do you, sis. Because at the end of the day, it's all you. It's all you. And I want to see everyone succeed and be the best version of themselves. So... Just remember, you are capable of anything you put your mind to. So thank you guys for listening to this week. And I will see you guys next week. And don't forget to keep on sipping. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.